Welcome back to our HS YouTube channel. In today's class, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful necktie kimono blouse with waist belt. It's a very simple tutorial and it also has an inverted place at the waistline area, as we have seen. It's beginner friendly and I'm sure you're going to get this. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. this is actually a it's a blouse it's a kimono blouse which means we are cutting the sleeve together with the main fabric so this is how i folded my fabric this is a yard of satin fabric i'm using this satin fabric for my tutorial and i have one yard like this so i folded this by the yardage first so that's going to give me 18 inches on fold the total length that I want for my blouse is 20 inches. So now I have folded this one yard of fabric into two like this. And then after folding into two, I'm going to fold into four again. So I'm cutting both the front and back together. And then I'm cutting the lining. I'm cutting the main fabric together. I'm cutting the sleeve together with the main body. Sorry. So I have my fabric folded into four now. I'm just going to turn it so that you can all see it well so this fold point is going to be my starting point why this um open area is going to be the hem and this folded point on this side is going to be the center front and center back area so here, okay so on this center fold area like i said it's a total neckline so i'm going to measure my neck width and neck depth for my neck width i want it to be around 2.5 or 2.75 inches for the width you can see what i have there and then for the neck depth i'm using one inch for the back and then i'm using three inches for the front so my shoulder measurement is 14 inches 7 divided 14 divided by 14 divided by 2 is going to give me 7 inches but you may not use your shoulder measurement you can just measure from your neck center of your neck to where the sleeve is going to be which is your wrist so measuring from my center back all the way to my sleeve i have 28 inches okay so now i'm turning the fabric like this so that i can take everything so from my center front now i'm going to measure all the way down and i have 29 inches here so my measurement stops around 28 inches and then i'm going to be passing elastic around the hem of the sleeve so i'm going to use the extra one inch to create that casing so that is what i have so for my shoulder slope on this end point of my sleeve i'm going to measure down one and a half inches and then on that point i'm going to connect from my neck point all the way to the shoulder slope there okay so i've connected this now i can see the line that i have so using my curve driller i'm going to also connect my neckline together this is the back and this is the front neckline so after doing this the next thing we need to do now is to measure our sleeve opening that's how wide the sleeve is going to be and like i said you cannot use your actual wrist measurements because we want it to be like a ball sleeve so it's going to have some gathering around that area so if your actual wrist measurement is nine inches like i have here you can double it or you can triple it remember this is a total of nine inches for the round sleeve and this is just half of the sleeve so i can just place the nine inches here which means for the two sides it's going to become 18 inches but you can just make it 10 inches so whichever one you want is fine so now i'm working with 10 inches from where my shoulder stop stops and that's going to give me around 20 inches by the time i finish cutting it out so now to shape this blouse from the starting point i'm going to take my bust measurements and my that's my bust line where my bust line is going to be this is just for shaping purposes so here i'm going to take my bust measurements on my, remember we take our bust measurements normally on the armhole line and then i'm going to take my waist measurements which is 16 inches here so on that point i'm going to make my mark like this and then the the 10 inches that i use for my opening here 
I'm going to measure it from the starting point, and from the starting point is around 11 and a half inches. Remember, we went down by one and a half inches for the shoulder slope. So now the 11 and a half inches also, I'm going to mark it here. Like I said, this is just for me to shape this blouse easily. So you don't need this line actually. So I have it. So on this 11 inches mark, I'm going to place my bust measurement. That's the fullest part of my upper part. Remember, the hip is not included in this. And you can also use your hip measurements because it's not so big. It's not a fitted blouse. So the bust measurement for me is 40 inches divided by 4. It's going to give me 10 inches. I'm going to add extra 1 inch for his. And that's going to leave me with 11 inches. And then I'm going to add another 1 inch for my seam allowance. So it stops here. You can just continue then and have your measurement, your marking up to your sleeve area. Then here, I'm going to, you can shape it. You can use your waist measurements or you can just maintain what you have. The waist I'm working with is actually 30 inches. I can increase it to 32 inches and that's going to leave me with 8 inches. You can even increase it more. Depends on how big you want this to be. So... I'm going to add one inch seam allowance to it, but if you don't, if you think it's going to be too small for you, you can still add another extra one inch for it. So I'm going to connect this to my bust line, and then what I have here, I'm just going to take it down, which is 10 inches. I hope you can see it. So now this is the hem of the blouse. What I have here on my waistline, I'm just taking it to the hem of the blouse which is 10 inches and this is the shape that I have so here you can see the way I'm just covering my hand because you don't want it too sharp so I'm just going to blend it so this is a free hand cutting I'm just going to blend it in a curved way to meet my sleeve area so this is what we have so far now we can cut this out so like I said it's very simple and straightforward so now using my scissors i'm going to cut this so i've cut out my shoulder slope i'm cutting out the back neckline first because it's the shortest then i move the back now to cut my front neckline and also on this side i've cut it out i'm going to make sure that my hemline is equal by trimming off the excess that i have here after folding my fabric so now the hem is equal this is what i was talking about then i didn't cut exactly on the chalk line i just left like half an inch so that's going to just serve as the same allowance for me because this sleeve i want it to be a 10 inches by the time i finish stitching is so now this is the neckline now i'm going to remove them back and then refold to cut out the front neckline so we'll start sewing it before we sew it, I'm also going to. This is also this is a necktie top, so I'm going to cut the fabric that I'm going to use to tie it on the neckline and also on the waist area. So now this is the front neckline already cut out. So I'm going to set this aside and then. Okay, so now for the neckline tie, I have cut out this fabric. It's 60 inches in length okay by the time i'm through and i don't want it this long i can still cut it out and then the width of this fabric is six inches so i, I want it to be two and a half inches by the time because it's a bit high so i'm just going to take it to the ironing table now and fold it into two first then after folding it into two i'll iron it down and then i'm going to fold it the same allowance half an inch on both sides and then i'm going to iron that down also likewise for the waistline i cut out another strip of fabric for the waistline also and then i'm going to do the same thing fold into two and then i'm going to close it up like this so while waiting for that i'm going to take this to my sewing machine now and then i'm going to lay the front and back on each other like this then i will sew it on the shoulder area i'll sew the shoulder together and then i'm going to sew it on the side also and i'll bring it back so that we can fix our necktie on it 
okay so i forgot to mention if you want to have like an opening at the back here you can just slash it open like five five inches or four inches so that you can wear it easily remember it's a total neckline but for me i'm just going to leave a little opening on the shoulder area because i don't i want my collar to just go all the way around okay in fact if you want to have a zipper there you can just leave you can while folding it you fold it separately and make sure you include the zipper allowance for the back so that i can run a zipper through it but i don't want to have a break in my collar so i want the neckline to go all the way around i don't want to have any opening at the back but to wear this i'm just going to leave small space on the shoulder area so that it can open up a bit for the wearer to wear it easily so the side i'm going to be tying i'm going to leave it open so i just want to leave that there if you want to have a zipper on your own you're not going to fold it exactly the same way i folded it you make sure when you are folding your set your back panel you had your one inch zipper allowance to it or you can just open it at the back here and then you fix a button by the time you fix your collar okay so i've gone ahead to sew it together as you have seen and then i've turned it so this is what it looks like this is the sleeve you can see it together with the main bodies and this is the neckline so this is what i was explaining if you wanted to have an opening at the back you just fold it into two like this and then you open it here by maybe four or five inches so that i can wear it easily but for me i'm just going to be creating the inch uh, the opening on the shoulder area so i'm going to open the shoulder by maybe three inches on the side where my necktie is going to be so you need to decide where you want to be tying it so this side is where i want it to be so here i'm just going to open it like three inches with my seam ripper before i fix my my tie so now i have my tie just like i said i folded it into half first and then i folded this half an inch seam allowance so now you're going to note the midpoint of this so after noting the midpoint i'm going to you can notch it on the seam allowance area or you can just mark it with your chalk so that you can see it well so after marking your chalk is running from this side to this side so now i'm going to start from from the side where my tie is going to be and not starting from that side you're starting from the shoulder of the other side so now at this midpoint i'm going to suspend the neckline in between like this and then i'm going to pin it around and stop where we have it separate remember we are still going to open it so i'm going to stop here that is separate and then i'll do the other one for the other side also and then i'm going to stop here so now this is the neckline i've just pinned it as you can see i just pinned it starting from where i marked you can see my marking so i started from this shoulder and then i pinned it around to the other shoulder and then i've opened it up like this by around three inches so that it can be easy to wear so that i can go through the head easily so like i said you can either open it on the shoulder here or you open it at your center back but i just want everything to just go around like this i don't want to have a button or anything or zipper at my center back so that's why i left it like this this is what it looks like this is the leftover that i have from my fabric so now to turn this now i'm going to take the leftover now and fold this right side facing right side open up the seam allowance then i'm going to stitch it all the way to where my neck point is here then i'm going to bring it out before i sew around the neckline i'll do the same thing for the other side likewise for the waist also the side where i have my tie on the neckline i'm going to bring the other fabric and then i'm going to pin it around so i'll note the midpoint also as well then i'm going to start spinning from this side where the tie is not going to be i'll pin it around and then have the left over here so this is quite short so i'm going to cut a little fabric to add to it so that i can have something longer so i'll do this now and bring it back to show us what we have also on the sleeve on the hem of the sleeve i folded it in remember we are going to be gathering this is not my actual wrist measurement so we are going to gather this and to do that we need to have a casing where we can pass our elastic so on the hem you can see i did not close it completely on the hem of the sleeve i folded in like 0.75 that's a quarter of an inch and then i sew it so i'm going to be passing my elastic through this place to gather it to my actual measurement so i'll go over to the sewing machine now and sew the band to it and then i'll bring it back to show us what it looks like 
okay so now i've gone ahead to sew the neck tie as you can see and then this is the opening for the front so here you can just place your emmy glue to glue it down to iron it down so that it can stay glued for you and then we can just tie it here anyhow we want so now the neckline is sorted now we move to the waist area so for the waist area remember we did not use our actual waist measurement and because we are not going to be passing an elastic here the waist have to be fitted okay so to gather it back to the actual measurement of your waistline we are going to be pleating it just like this inverted place like this so i'm going to use the other side to show us so now i've notched the midpoint so the actual waist measurement is 30 inches 30 divided by four is going to give us seven and a half so from here now i'm going to measure seven and a half inches and this is seven and a half so once i have seven and a half i'm going to measure what i have as excess and this is around two inches because this half an inch is what we are going to use to sew it so i have two inches extra on each side so what i'm going to do now is fold it on the midpoint where i have my notch and then i'm going to measure the two inches excess that i have so this is the two inches excess on that two inches mark you are going to pleat it like you're pleating making an inverted pleat just like this then after pleating it so what you're going to do basically is split one inch towards this side so unfold it's going to be two inches by the time you open it and then one inch towards the other side like this so you have two inches and then that is what you're going to suspend inside your band so when you sew this completely now you have something like this this is what you have and that must have gathered it back to your actual waist measurement so i've done for this and i've pinned it so i'll do the same thing here now and then i'll take it to the sewing machine and sew okay so i've also sewn it you can see now that it is sewn together so i adjusted this to the actual mesh actual waist measurement of 30 inches so i will just open it a bit here and then use my emmy glue to so it's that so that it can go through the bust area remember the bust, the waist is smaller than the bust but you can also adjust yours to maybe two inches higher than the waist you don't have to use your exact waist measurement but i want it fitted on the waistline so i made it to my exact waist measurement then i'm going to open like a slit on one side here then i'll weave all these rough edges and use my emmy glue to glue this down so now i have my waistband and my necktie so the last thing to do now is to pass your elastic around the hem of the sleeve so now i have my elastic to my wrist measurement minus one and then i'm going to pass it around to gather the waist measurement and my blouse is ready so now after doing this i'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like okay so this is what it looks like this is what the blouse looks like this is the tie that we have on the neckline it can be as long as you want and this is the inverted place on the waist area so this is the band for the waist also and then it is tied on this side also and this can be as long as you want as well so this is the sleeve and i've gathered the sleeve with my elastic band so the sleeve can be bigger than this if you want you just need to slant your measurements when you have so in another video we can do something like that if you want to increase the hem of your sleeve just increase the measurements and then you slant it towards the ham hole area that we stopped here so this is what the full view of the blouse looks like and it's very simple to make and it's really beautiful i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye